Good morning. We would like to welcome all of you to St. Edward today. If you are new to our parish and would like to become a registered parishioner, you can pick up a registration form in the vestibule or go online or stop by the parish office. We also welcome all of our live stream viewers who are with us today. For our non-Catholic brothers and sisters, and for those unable to receive communion, you may come forward at communion time to receive a prayer. We use this gesture. If you cannot walk up to receive communion, please ask one of the hospitality ministers in the back, and they will see that communion is brought to you. We have child care available during the 1030 Sunday Mass over in the Parish Hall Nursery. Please stand and join us in the processional Jesus is Risen, number 76, in today's Missal. It's verses 1 and 3. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today's uh, uh, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Next week will be the Ascension. We've been listening to our Lord talk about, in, in John's Gospel, a lot of really uh, comforting and, and deep theology. Today he tells us that he's going to prepare a place for us, and that he wishes to, if we follow his commandments, that he and, and, and his Father and the Spirit will come and make their home within us. So that's what we're trying to do, is to make a home for God so that he might guide our lives. And so we begin by acknowledging our sins so as to prepare a place for the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie
Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we rel relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, on Gentile origin. Greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh God, may all the people 
peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. Oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like the precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had twelve courses of stone at its foundation, in which were inscribed the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light and its lamp was the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and will remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My face looks even worse than normal. I threw my back out yesterday, so if I grimace at you, don't take it personally. That's all I have to say. It's like, oh my gosh. Um, I know a lot of us uh, these days have been thinking about prepper, being preppers or being more prepared than we used to be. Um, after the ice storm a couple of years ago, well, I bet a lot of our of our number went and got down and got generators, you know, somewhere out for a couple of weeks. And I discovered over there for the rectory that uh, the only heat that I had was woolen underwear, so I had to get busy and get to work on something a little bit better, you know. And it, it's, I say that because our Lord talks about he says, don't let your hearts be troubled or afraid. I'm leaving you peace, my peace I give you. But it's not like the world gives us peace. 
the, a worldly peace is something without any war or strife or, or troubles or problems, not, nothing with money or children or work or, or stress or, or bad weather or ice storms or, or just having everything under control and, and you know, have smooth sailing. And, but that's not the peace our Lord's talking about. Uh, that's not really life anyway. Life is filled with troubles and we, we can't escape them. But Jesus wants to give us the peace of knowing that we're loved, that we have a home in the future, but also a home with God right now. And it's not easy, it's not hard to, to invite him in. We just have to try to do what he asks us to do, like, like we were supposed to do with our parents or we're still supposed to do. But um, it, I was thinking about prepping about something that has stuck with me all these years is that, you know, I used to work, as you know, for American Airlines, and one of the things they were real sticklers about was attendance. And you could not, if you, we called it uh, no call, no show. You know, if you just didn't show up, if you were late and you didn't even let anybody know, you know, three strikes and you're out. And with the, with the traffic the way it was in Los Angeles, uh, nobody could use an excuse that there was, I got caught in a traffic jam. You just had and this is before GPS and stuff, you just had to be there. So we would all try to get there early. I had, uh, um, I had a, after the Vega finally died, it died in the middle of San Diego, uh, and I just, I pulled up by the freeway, and I said, I'm getting divorced from you. And so I went and got an escort, which is the second worst car ever made. I, I know how to pick them, you know. And then when my mother died, I got this uh, 76 Malibu Classic. And it was just, it was, this car was, you, you know, it was like a motorboat. You, could, you couldn't you could feel a thing. Uh, you know, 5,000 pound cars, maybe some of you still have one of those. It was um, 12 city and 14 highway. Now that's the kind of car that, that everybody wants today. So anyway, uh, I figured, you know, if I have a dead battery or some problem, I'll have a spare car and I won't have to worry about that. You know, you turn the ignition and you're gonna get uh, a late call for this, for this, for this company. And so um, I thought that was a very smart thing. And I liked having, I liked the older car better than the new one anyway. So I kept them both. And one day, of course, I got the dreaded, you know, you turn the key to get that clicking sound. Click, click, click. I'm not sure what that means, but it meant the, the car was dead. Uh, it was the starter or the, or the battery, but it was dead. So I thought, well, you know, I'm so smart. And I went over to the, get the, the escort to dr put that in, and it was dead. Click, click, click. I, I knew it was the Lord, and I told him, I said, you know, uh, <laughs> I pray, I tithe. How come I got this? You know, that, that kind of thing. But it was, an, it was a lesson, you know. Uh, I took a taxi, and I got to work, and that was fine. Because um, I, I had that built in, that spare time uh, built in, so they had time to come and get me. But it, it's just a reminder that no matter, we're always prepping for the last disaster, and our Lord wants us not to worry about things. It's, it's easier said than done. I went home last night and I thought, well, it's, you know, it's, it's not easy to, to actually to do what our Lord says. But in reality, um, you know, we have to live our lives. We, we really don't know what's coming in the next hour, the next day. And so it's good to have a philosophy of life that enables us to, to handle what's coming. And to know that there's somebody that cares about us and is really, is actually arranging things for our good. Sometimes we have to go through something so that we can bear better fruit. Sometimes even the branches that are bearing fruit are pruned, but that's so we can, be, can bear more fruit. And something that isn't, isn't bearing is cut away. Our Lord is the, is, has many titles, and the vine dresser is one of them. And he is also guiding us on the road. He's the way and the truth and the life. Um, there's a number of things that came to mind. Um, one of them, one was, is, a, is, not a, is not a saint by any means, but uh, something that I, I remember from what Mark Twain said. I was going to start with this, but I haven't had all my coffee yet. He said, uh, he said, I've gone through many terrible things in my life, and a few of them actually happened. <laughs> See that? You know what I mean? How many things we go through in our minds, and then something else happens, or it turns out great, and we were worried about it. Uh, uh, it was uh, Saint, um, no, I'm having a brain freeze. I'm not going to say until I get this name right. Who's the saint of Saint Joseph's Oratory? Saint, Andre. saint uh, thank you. Saint Andre, I, thank you, Holy Spirit, and whoever that was. 
St. <laughs> Saint, Saint Audrey Bisset, who's, who's a, a, there's a quote of his that I have on my computer, actually, and he, uh, and it was funny, I was having a day that was kind of very difficult, and my computer just spontaneously put this quote up on my, on my screen, which I thought was very interesting. But he said, he, he was a man that was very simple. He was not a very intelligent man on the outside, and the, the, the community there almost didn't take him. But then they, when they did take him, they made him a lay brother, and he would, they put him out by the, by, the, by the gates so he could greet people. They thought it was a safe enough place. They wouldn't allow him to be ordained. So he out there, there were all these miracles occurring, and he, was, he would always say that St. Joseph was praying for them. And if you go there, you see all these crutches everywhere and, and all kinds of incredible miracles. But he was also known for his pithy sayings. They had a, there's a book with about 70 pages of his, of his best uh, quotes that he would say over and over again to the pilgrims that would line up at the gate to get prayed with by this by this really holy man who was considered to be dumb. Those are the kind that usually are the holiest, I think, the ones that people don't realize that they are, and he didn't either. And he said, uh, people worry for nothing. They worry about the wrong things. God will take care of them at the right moment and the right time if they trust him. But he, most of us uh, will tend to to put God, well, I'm going to deal with all these problems and then I'll pray, or, or we, God is not the first thing on our to-do list, especially when we're in some kind of crisis. But actually, if we put God first, the other things will fall into place. If we put him last, which is our tendency to do, maybe not, not, not intentionally, but if we put every, God off to the end, then everything else is going to be more difficult because we didn't invite our Lord in. Um, another quote is from St. Uh, Faustina. She was very ill, and she was also considered uh, to be kind of a kook because they had um, nuns had come to realize that she had been said she was seeing visions and things. And so she, uh, our Lord taught her a few things about how to live, and she said, our Lord taught me that I can now live only hour to hour and no more. I love every hour that the Lord gives me and try to do, uh, make the best use of the time God gives me in the present hour and no more. And that seems to me to be a really good way to live. Not that we're not planning the future, but in, the, in reality, the now is all we've really got. And so when we, when we start living in the present hour and in the present moment, that's where God is because God is, is eternity. He is always now. He, he, of course, he, he is in the past and the future because he's outside of time, but we are not. And so in this present moment is eternity if we know where to find it because that's where God is. And he says, if you don't, you worry about the wrong things. It's if you keep my commandments and if you try to please me, especially by being, by being kind to others and by, uh, by living a life that, that a Christian should be living, we, we will love you and we'll come to you and make our home with you because doing those things says, I love you, God, and he comes in and then we'll begin to guide our lives in the ways that really matter. And we'll find that things inexplicably will go better and will go well, even though we ourselves are not aware of often of his actions. Every so often we'll get a glimpse of what God is doing and we'll be amazed, but only a glimpse because the real vision of how our lives uh, were put together will be seen on the last day of our lives when we'll see all the ways that God was there and the times that we may have maybe given him the boot and we have to ask his forgiveness and he'll come back and especially in confession when it's a serious sin but our Lord is, is the peace the world gives is not what he's offering he also said he's going to uh, permit crosses in our lives but when we complain about it or ask him about it he'll say well it worked too good in my life it will work good in your life. Even every suffering has meaning and value. All of it is for a purpose, and it, it purpose to make us the, the people that we are supposed to be for all eternity. And that's the whole point of life, is to mold, form, and shape us for the world of the future that is very real. And where Christ is, he says, I'm going away, and if you rejoiced, you'd be glad I'm going away. He used to think, why in the world would they rejoice that he's going away? It's because he's going to prepare a place for us and will send the Holy Spirit even more powerful than he is uh, in our lives because the Holy Spirit, when he's not there, will pour down uh, constant, his constant presence, although not seen. 
And so we, as we um, think about these words, you remember that our Lord tells us that um, if you love me and you keep my word, my Father will love them and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our prayers to the Lord who loves us. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, may the Lord continue to bless him with wisdom as he guides the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may God give them wisdom in working to protect human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved mothers, living and deceased, especially for those whose names are on the altar. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community graduating from high school or college, may the Holy Spirit guide them along the right path in their next chapter of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Cleo Clark and Mark Maynard, may they be marked with the sign of faith and share in the fullness of eternal life with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on our prayer chain and for all other prayer intentions we have hold quietly in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our former deacon, Dalton, will be ordained a priest this coming Saturday. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Almighty God, thank you for guiding our lives. Help us to trust in you in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created 
rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again, until you Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward, St. Clair, St. Rita Cassia, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession, in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Alexander, our Bishop, Peter, our assistant Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the 
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer our neighbor the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion for those who are viewing. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray.
almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Bible study with Brad will continue this Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. in the parish hall. Everyone is invited to our Partners in Chime end-of-season concert this Sunday, May 22nd at 4 p.m. in church. First Communion photos and banners are ready to be picked up after Mass in the vestibule. Look for the table by the flags. We have Mother's Day cards in the vestibule. These cards will be placed on the altar during the month of May. Our youth are holding a fundraiser for World Youth Day. Stop by the envelope wall in the vestibule and help them out. Last weekend, it's the last weekend for dropping off your St. Germain baby bottles. Volunteers will be in the vestibule after Mass to collect them. Mark your calendars for the next Red Cross blood drive. It will be on Thursday, May 26th at 1230 p.m. Sign up information is in the bulletin. Envelopes for the second collection for Catholic Charities are in the vestibule. And the funeral mass for Cleo Clark will be held on Tuesday, May 24th at 1 p.m., followed by a reception in the hall. And now representatives from our youth group will speak about their upcoming fundraiser. I am Nick and this is Monica. We along with the youth of St. Ed's have created a giving wall. We have decorated and denoted envelopes from $1 up to 150. There are a couple extra envelopes at the 250 and the 450 amount for those who might be able to donate more freely. A 450 donation will sponsor a young person to attend Higher Calling Ropes Camp. We are asking you to pick an envelope and donate, do, donate the amount on the envelope. If the amount you would like to donate is already taken, feel free to take two envelopes to create the amount you like. If all envelopes are taken in return, we would have raised over $13,000 in scholarship funds for those attending summer camp and World Youth Day in Portugal with the Archbishop Sample. Envelope donations can be given to those of us at the envelope wall or simply turned in at collection in one of the collection boxes or can be made at saineds.com on our donation page. The link will be live soon. Every donation helps. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And please support our youth group. I'm a priest because of my youth group many years ago, so I really appreciate a good youth group. So, And that's, that's incredible. They used to only allow the older kids to go, and so now they're permitting younger ones, so it's, it's great to be able to see the Pope and all the rest of them in World Youth Day with all the kids throughout the world. Um, the part, the bell, bell thing is going to be great. I'm letting you guys practice, and it's, it's just great. It's, it's, um, it's well, anyway, it's bells. Um, <laughs> That thought of, I better find another way to plug that candle. Um, so uh, we, um, I hope you enjoyed Father Clovis last week. I went on a little retreat. I forgot to mention it. He's the one that sends the deacons to us. So I hope you were nice to him. Did he tell you that? Yeah, okay. So, so he likes St. Ed's, so we always get a really good deacon. Speaking of which, um, I am supposed to go to uh, the um, um, Father... Um, Father, Father, he's not Father yet, Deacon Dalton's ordination this next Saturday, uh, and I and drive, but uh, I hurt my back yesterday, so hopefully it will be a bit good enough for me to drive by then, you know, because I, I can barely stand up and sit down this morning, but it should, hopefully it'll go away, and you never know with these things, but if, if I am able to go, Father uh, Coleman will be here this weekend, I'm sorry they both came in the same month, it's very bad planning, but uh, as somebody said last night, I need to be the representative of the parish for, for him. Um, so it'd be kind of interesting who our prisoners are going. 
um, and to be able to be at his first mass. It's my ju summer jubilee, so maybe I can uh, put myself in his place. You know how it is when you've been married 25 or 50 years, you have to remember what it was like to walk down the aisle, you know. But anyway, so that's that. And then as far as the old church, I thank Mike Allman for last weekend for, for filling, being up to date. I have to admit it caught a lot of us by surprise, but it shouldn't have because 10 years ago they said it had 10 to 15 years to live. And so we had, had a recheck, and, and uh, we need to close it, and that's just all there is to it. You have to go through the stages of grief, and somehow the, the main grief is trying to shoehorn everybody into the remaining facilities. We're going to probably use the vestibule for a classroom, and, and that involves having to cut the sound off back there and stuff like that. There's just all kinds of details. We may, may enclose the picnic shelter and use that, all kinds because the parking lot will extend right to the picnic shelter, so all kinds of ideas. But um, the, um, what we're hoping to do, I don't know, if I can't remember if Mike told you this or not, but if you, can, if you look back there where the, where the school is, that's where the parking lot's going to go. There's a big slope up there. We've got to get all that dirt down to level, down so it's a level with this current parking lot. This building, if we can pull it down in the next few weeks, we'll be able to take all that dirt and put it right into the hole, and that would be, save us a ton of money, plus a ton of dirt, and plus uh, be able to compact it professionally, and it'll be ready to go. So that, that, that is a contingent on finding a bid that we can afford to do, to, put, to pull it down. So we're, we've got at least two bids going, working on a third one. And uh, Mike Grant's one of them that built the church, so we'll see how that goes. We'll keep you up to date. And uh, like I said, we're trying to shoehorn everything in. The fall will be a little bit tricky, but you know, we live without it, uh, without that building eight or nine years ago, and I guess we might have to do it again. But your safety is the most important thing. And uh, so, that's that's speaking of uh, of crises that we shouldn't be worrying about. So I'm, you know, anyway. So it's your church. It's 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 kind of funny. I I was thinking my first visit to that old church was in. Uh, 1992, there was, any of you old-timers remember uh, an orange bathtub-ish looking thing for, for, for baptizing people? I came in there, I thought, oh, somebody's got bad taste. <laughs> I, said, I said, this building looks like the Elks Club. Anyway, anyway I, I never dreamt in a million years I'd be, I'd be here pulling it down, but anyway, that's, life has its funny turns. Anyway, not funny to you, but anyway, that's more coffee and I'll I'll have this a better pitch at the next mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and glorify the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, Angel. defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>